Jan Kassel is well placed to speak about his Prague, given that he was mayor of the city for four years at the turn of the millennium. Since then, the one-time liberal politician has returned to his original profession of architect. Our tour of spots in the city close to Kassel's heart begins at Naslamniku, a traditional pub right by Stromovka and very near where he comes from in Prague 6. As we were living not far from here, I was used to go for my father to bring beer from Zaškovo, which was a small, I would say, ugly, dirty pub in the corner of Tomanova Street, Vardenska nowadays. But na Somniku I remember from maybe late early 60s, when I was like a teenager, maybe 14, 13, 14. This is the traditional meeting point for underground people, for musicians, for local people. For my schoolmates, I was attending the school in Krupko and Amnesty, not far from here. And is your grammar school the building just up here that looks out over Stromovka? Yes, exactly. That's the building which is next to the Svati Godhards and Godhard Church. And given that your school was right beside Stromovka, which is Prague's biggest and I guess best park, was Stromovka your playground? Definitely. Definitely Stromovka was a place where we are escaping every, every day from school, down the hill, Good hard the street. In winter, bobsledging, skiing, or just sliding, uh, summer walks, football. Naslamniku has been renovated. What's your view of the renovation? Because I haven't been here for many years. I used to come here a lot years ago. To me, it looks quite similar. It's similar with the atmosphere, but it's not. it doesn't smell as much as it did. It's also because the smoking ban has come in, right? First, but then it was really... The smoke was in the walls. I think that just painting wouldn't help. And it's it's very similar in, in the feeling, but you have new tables, you have new bar, you have probably some, some shelves are new. And it's quite pleasant. It's it's keeping the atmosphere and thanks God because of the bed of smoking, it won't be smelly and, and dirty. There seem to be fewer and fewer of these kind of old school Prague pubs in existence. Are you nostalgic for those days? Or those kind of places? Yeah, that's a good point. Nostalgic for the places, not for times. Because the times were terrible, they were, it was a different, different regime. Despite the fact that uh, I was not in jail, I was not a dissident, I was, I was living a reasonable life without wishes to become an important person, becoming a, a Red Book uh, owner, Communist Party member. So I don't regret times, I regret some atmosphere, certain things which, which are disappearing. And are there any particular nights here that stand out in your memory, times in the past? I definitely got sick sometimes <laughs> because of the beer. Uh, there are some, uh, some rendezvous uh, nearby or here. If I'm not mistaken, there was a one event when we were in the nine or eighth class. A friend of mine, we were performing as a, as a group, as a band. A rock band. I played bass, guitar, bass guitar. We like groups like Kings and Trucks and this type of music. So I think once there was some event that we tried to play here. I don't think it was a big success. It was <laughs> more disaster than success. I think this is the first pub where I really experienced barmen because my first job was around the corner here. The first pub where I experienced barmen always slamming down one more pint before you could not even finish. Yeah, exactly. Not finishing, not asking, you got to be here. But it somehow worked. Yeah, it's, it, it worked always, it always. The, the behavior of, of these guys is much better. And nowadays, I don't think that we have the type of polyvets. Uh, you, you know it from Schweig, the, the, the rude guy who hates guests. Luckily, there are fewer of those guys. <laughs> yeah, the, the, there were many guys of this kind. Now, fewer and fewer. From Naslamniku, it's maybe 500 meters to Pushkinovo Namiesti, a quiet leafy square in the middle of the Bubanec district where Jan Castle grew up, and after an absence of two decades, today calls home once again. Indeed, the park bench we sit on seems equidistant from a number of key landmarks in his life. I was born like 100 meters, not even 150 meters from here, in Rusvoltova, 
I was in kindergarten, uh, which now the street is uh, Charles de Gaulle. I was living in Telmanova, which is Vagdenská street. Nowadays I'm living in Eliashova. And we are in the center, which is Pushkinova Namisti, called Ural for everybody. Because the names of streets and, and squares were derived from uh, First War battlefields, from legions of Czech, Czechoslovakia. So you can find it in Piave, Namarnie. Italy, you can find Ural. There were there were a lot of names connected with the First World War because the Bubenec a new development was built in twenties, let's say from beginning till till mid thirties. So all these were new streets. What was it like actually growing up in this part of town in the fifties and sixties? Well, it was a big fun because there were not so many cars. It was a very safe neighborhood. There were some some soldiers, some officers living here, some policemen nearby, but we didn't feel like in an endangered area. I was walking from school alone. I was playing football. I was chatting, sitting here on benches, and later on looking for girls, what's going on. You were telling me on our way here that this area changed a bit after the Soviet invasion of 1968. How was that? That's true, that's true, because the, the Russian embassy was, as I remember from probably end of the war, Podkashtani where it is. Then they built in mid-60s that uh, industrial representation of what was the name of that like semi-rounded building in uh, Sibirske Amnesty, and it continued. And after 68, because a lot of Russians moved to Prague, they built the complex of Russian uh, grammar school and high school, which more or less destroyed the, the atmosphere of old Bubanec in that part. And a lot of Russians moved in, so there were a lot of Russians living nearby. Nowadays I must laugh because uh, probably I meet more Russians now than I met in seven, early 70s. <laughs> because Russians like it here. Kalinka used to be in the corner, Kalinka shop. Uh, then there are a lot of other Arbat and other uh, lot, of, uh, lot of Russian shops and Russians like it in Bubanic. They, they like Prague 6. They feel probably like safe and I don't want to say welcome, but not refused. I've never lived in Prague 6, but whenever I come here, I always feel it's a little bit kind of dead. It used to be when we moved in, there were not as many restaurants as they are. We said, oh, what's happening? Jesus, there are so many expats living here. And there were like two restaurants in the vicinity. It's much better now. And we were comparing to Vinohrady and Prague 7 because Letna was booming at that time. There was a coffee or restaurant uh, every second building and still is. While here it, it was a bit slowed down and it, it's a bit lazy neighborhood. You are right that this is not the most uh, active and uh, vivid envi environment neighborhood. Uh, it's uh, hipsters on bicycles and <laughs> coffee shops and uh, all that. It, People are walking the dog, small kids are playing, it's not noisy, it's it's a bit lazy neighborhood and I, I, I have nothing against. From Pushkinovo Namiesti, Jan Kassel and I take public transport down to Malastrana, the picturesque district beneath Prague Castle. The architect and former politician lived there from the late 1970s to 1999 when he returned to Bubanec. Though our guide argues that time inevitably moves on, he does have a lot of nostalgia for the Malastrana of yesteryear. Mainly 80s, end of 70s and 80s, was a very lucky time in Malastrana because there were not too many tourists. Uh, there were a lot of artists and a lot of people who enjoyed to be in the heart of the city, to be in Malastrana. They somehow evaluated the quality of environment, architecture, history, monuments. And there were a lot of, lot of them were doing everything by themselves. So they changed their new apartments, villas for for shabby uh, ground floor, uh, three rooms uh, somewhere in Vesilova Street to just to be there. A lot of them had to move out because the renovation program came. That was part of my, let's say, political involvement in the late 80s because we were protesting and we were against the removal of local people somewhere out and renovation and some new, better people moving in, which was the case. We were a quite strong community. I was living in, in Vajska Street 15, which was a big house with a big yard. And despite the fact I was I was a newcomer, I was a newcomer in 77. They took me like, uh, like local within a couple of years. 
and I became uh, one of representatives of Malastrana after the Velvet Revolution. And how do you view Malastrana today? Yeah, that's a big difference. You may you may dream about going against the flow of time and to, to return to that uh, melancholic atmosphere of foggy Vlaiska street, walking to Petshin, uh, Obkovitska Zahrada, walking the dog or walking with kids. Well, it's over. It's, uh, it will never get back. I believe that some balance will can be found between the logical interest and pressure of tourists and visitors and the interest of locals because uh, the local atmosphere is disappearing but it's not a it's not a fault of tourists it's a fault of local people who are not fighting for keeping that the first thing they did after the Velvet revolution they sold their if they restituted the house they sold their house they sold their bakery in mostecka just for stupid money because they simply saw the, the richness as, a, as their goal instead of keeping the tradition. You don't see it in Great Britain, you don't see it in many countries. People are proud of being a local butcher, a local baker, and they keep that tradition. And I believe that keeping that through that wild 90s or end of the last century, it would be profiting now. It would be really something unique. This is a big question, but I wanted to ask you as an architect, How do you view the way Prague has developed since the beginning of the 90s? There are different aspects. From the point of view of renovation, reconstruction, improvement of the quality of environment, from health aspects to noise and all that, it's much better and I cannot complain. I'm part of that. I was designing several houses and I took part in that in that process. Concerning the, the let's say, the urban sprawl, Protein, protein to, to to the environment, to the neighborhood, uh, satellites built around the city. That's not the, the most positive development. But it was, again, it was something which probably we had to go through. I'm going to put you on the spot and ask you, what is, in your view, the best building that's been built in Prague in the last couple of decades? <laughs> new one, if, if you are talking about the new building, it's more difficult than renovation because the best building I would uh, remind you is the is Obecni Dom, is the municipal house, which we renovated in 1997-1997 as a city of Prague. I have to I have to quote uh, Dancing House. I have to I have to talk about Russian. If you would like to mention the, something on the n- international level, what's recognized. It's probably uh, Rashin dancing house only.